Hi, my name is Mr. Benji, cultural ambassador and lead singer for TK International. COVID-19 has hit my livelihood very hard. No large crowds means no shows. No live performances means no CEO. I want to get back to doing what I love to what you love. Let's get back to 13. I can only get back on stage if we all take the vaccine. Get back. Mr. Benji said so. Hi, my name is Mr. Benji, cultural ambassador and lead singer for TK International. COVID-19 has hit my livelihood very hard. No large crowds means no shows. No live performances means no CEO. I want to get back to doing what I love to watch. Good evening, and I do hope you hear me now. <laughs> uh, you know, I, am, I, I do hope that everyone is doing well this evening and that you've had a blessed Sunday with your families in, in reflection and prayer. I am really happy to be back with you on this program. I wanted to resume spending this hour with you every Sunday evening because, especially in this period, it is important that we have this time together. It is an opportunity for me to hear from you, listen to your views on how together we can improve our circumstances and gain your feedback on the policies your government is developing to manage this COVID-19 surge. I am aware of your anxieties about the social and economic implications of this pandemic, and I share those anxieties, I can tell you. The health of the nation is threatened, and this stands to impact the economic livelihood of every single Dominican. Even more troubling and worrying is the loss of life that we're experiencing due to this second surge. Once again, I extend deepest condolences to the family and loved ones of the four people we have lost from this virus. Their loss is our loss, and we offer our love, support, and prayers in these trying times. These deaths drive home the point that we cannot continue to treat COVID-19 lightly. It is serious, it is deadly, and it is taking the lives of people we love. But I firmly believe that the key to recovery is in our hands. We have the means to get this situation under control. If we practice the health and safety protocols religiously, we are sure to stem the spread and regain the freedom to move around more freely as we go about the business of our lives. Vaccination, my friends, is also a sure way of regaining control of our lives. Advising that you get vaccinated is not part of any grand scheme to impose on your personal freedoms or to take away your rights. It is simply the prudent and wise thing to do to protect your health and that of the people around you. At this stage, we must begin to think of the public good, of the greater good. To what extent are we willing to sacrifice the well-being of our loved ones, of ourselves, and of our country? This is no attempt to guilt trip. It is simply the reality of things. Vaccines work. Over 95% of the people who have tested positive were unvaccinated. And the world over, it is proven that vaccination have a better shot at surviving this virus, while the unvaccinated are at a higher risk of infection. The data, my dear friends, supports this. But luckily in Dominica, we have all the vaccines we need to serve all of you who are eligible. This week, we will be able to store the 46,500 doses of the Pfizer vaccines received 
from the United States government. We are most grateful to the U.S. government for this donation, which will also allow us to roll out a vaccination campaign for children 12 to 17. I wish to sincerely urge parents to consider getting their children vaccinated and protected against this virus. The Ministry of Health will provide more details on this rollout in the coming days. And as I have said before, I have no intention of making vaccines mandatory in Dominica. You have all the information available to you. You must make the choice between unproven and unfounded conspiracy theories or reliable data from the scientists and health professionals who have made this their lives work. I leave the decision to you, my dear people. I wish also a speedy recovery to the over 600 Dominicans who are, as of Friday, confirmed as active positive cases. Many of them, I have been advised, are asymptomatic. But as we well know, there'll be those who are more vulnerable than others and are experiencing more serious symptoms. Our prayers are with them and we look to the day soon when they will be cleared to return home, to work and to their families. Our health professionals, the doctors, nurses, ward aides, orderlies, are giving this fight their all. Our frontline workers at the ports, including our port workers, stevedores, and longshoremen, are working diligently to protect our entry points and keep the wheels of economic activity turning. Our police and fire officers are placing themselves and their families at risk every time they respond to a call. Their work cannot go unnoticed. As a people, our gratitude must know no bounds. Their service to the state is a show of patriotic love, and we must always exalt and recognize them. I really want to express on my personal behalf and that of the government my profound gratitude to all those who are playing their part. We have many people who are in the testing teams because we have had an aggressive testing regime going on. So I want to really thank them for this. The fight is on. We have to continue to fight. I also say to all of us that there is no blueprint to fighting COVID-19. There are no textbooks that you could read um, on how to deal with COVID-19. We have been given by the WHO, the World Health Organization and PAHO, guidelines as to how to minimize the spread of COVID-19. Uh, but the reality is the end to COVID-19 and the spread of COVID-19 reside with us, the people of Dominica. If we play our part in the physical and social distancing, we wear our masks, we hand sanitize, um, these things will help. And it will also help if we get vaccinated. Just to say to you, you know, earlier this year, we decided in the cabinet recognizing that the, the musicians were hardly impacted by COVID-19 and also recognizing that it would not be possible for us to have the World Career Music Festival as we know it um, this year in light of what was happening around us, even if at that time, back in June, July, Dominica was, um, was, 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 was nowhere close to the numbers that we are now and all of the cases that we were having were at our borders and we were able to contract them. We had set, for example, $400,000 to host a um, Creole Festival utilizing only local artists, only local artists, as a show of concern for them. And so we would have been investing in local artists some $400,000 and so forth. Now, with this current situation, we're still studying whether it is possible to have it. I understand that we have a call. I will take a call. Hello, caller, please. Yes, yeah, good evening. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead, please. Welcome. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, I happened I have to take a drive early on and I passed in Miro. 
And I, and I was appalled of the thousands of people that were at Miro. Nobody wearing masks, everybody having a good time. Honestly, I think we, we, you need to close the beaches on the weekends because that was really, I mean, I just could not believe it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, thank you, caller. I, um, I have heard of this occurrence. Um, the, the reality is, um, you know, we're trying to find a balance sometimes with uh, the health imperative and the economic imperative. And sometimes the government will do A, and people who are in group B will criticize the government for doing A, and when the government does B, people in group A will criticize the government for doing B. And when you do a hybrid, then both, both groups will end up criticizing the government. Um, you know, at the end of the day, my brother, each of us must recognize our role in fighting against this COVID-19. And if we have these occurrences where there is no physical distancing or social distancing, and we're not wearing our mask, then this spread will continue. And then if this spread continues, we're gonna have an impact, there's gonna be an impact on the economic livelihoods of many people. You know, I, I, I know too well the impact of a lockdown on small businesses, on any business for that matter, including, including government, including government revenue. This is why I am not a, a strong advocate of lockdowns and, and curfews. I believe in fundamental um, right of people to move freely. But we have to take decisions, and it's not about me and my ideological and philosophical views. It is about what is in the greater good for the country. And so you have to find a balance between the health imperative, what do you do to, to contain the spread, and what do you do at the same time so both can coexist in a responsible and prudent manner, the economic reality. The economic reality. But at the end of the day, I want to reiterate that this is this, the end to the spread of COVID-19 reside with the people. The people have to solve this problem. The government is there to put the enabling environment in place, to mobilize the resources, to ensure that the medicines are there, the vaccines are there, the medical teams are there, to provide care to people who fall ill, um, and to also take action to prevent people from getting ill. But if we place ourselves in situations that we should not be in, and we know what's going to happen. There's, there's a question from Facebook. Will the Pfizer vaccine be made available to adults? Yes, it will be made available to adults. We have 46,500 doses. You divide by two, you know how many thousands of people we can get vaccinated. Um, some 23,000 people um, we can get vaccinated in Dominica, including children from between 12 and 17. The other vaccines you can't use for uh, children. This is why we're stressing on the 12 to 17, because with the Pfizer vaccine, we can in fact vaccinate um, that age group of people um, uh, so that more people can be vaccinated and therefore more people can be protected from the ravages of this virus. So, but, so this is where we are. Um, you know, and as I was saying, that we have, as a government, we have provided our healthcare workers with the necessary support they need uh, to do the work, equipment, medicines, improved and extended facilities. Uh, caller, go ahead, please. Yes, good evening. Yes, sir, good evening. Prime Welcome. Minister. Good evening. Yes, sir, go ahead, please. Yeah, this is Alex the Irish, speaking of Barristan. Yes, sir. What I have, the problem I have in the meeting is, like, so many things are coming across the world. You understand? And more is made available for the people that most needed it. And it doesn't be reaching in the right hand. You understand? And I um I I, I was I was um I don't imagine I know what's going but I it, it was put it to me, it was put to me that that no you is aware of what happened. So I want to know what happened and especially what from for the housing and the stimulus package. Mm. But let's put it in the and it's all business. 
Okay. So I will feel important to point it. Okay. All right, Alistair. Um, I, I would have to know the specific circumstance that you're talking about. Um, you know, on the issue of housing, this government is unparalleled in its um, housing uh, program and, and providing housing to uh, a wide cross-section of people. Obviously, um, the, the number of people that will need homes will always outstrip the number of homes that are available anyone, at any one time. And sometimes the reality is um, everybody believes that they, he or she should be priority, you know. So we take note of, of, your, of your concern. And, um, you know, if I know of the specific issue or circumstance, then I can, I can certainly intervene and, and to deliver it. But I, I take your, I, I, I note your question and your concern. Um, as I was saying in regards to the provision of the support to fight this disease, uh, additional staff, we have... We have um, a whole new structure at, at Portsmouth managing COVID, um, both um, on the nursing side, on the doctor side. We have Dr. Dishose now, who is in Portsmouth as the medical director, overseeing all of the health, um, the, 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 the clinical um, treatment of our patients. We have created new positions of deputy uh, principal nursing officer and um, uh, nursing directors. I built four or five positions of nursing directors. I have given them all of the staff that they requested of me as Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. We have Mr. Johnson, Tyson Johnson, who is the chief pharmacist down here, um, overseeing the um, medicines and pharmaceuticals. And I must say that he's doing a fantastic job down there. And, 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 and I think that it has been a remarkable improvement based on the feedback from patients down there. So we're grateful for all of these operations. Yes, uh, there's a caller. Caller, please. Hello, welcome. Hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening. This is Alicia. This is Alicia Bernice. I'm calling from Atlanta. So, welcome. Thanks. So, my question is, um, there are people I'm hearing right now, I'm not, uh, I'm, I, can't, I have not seen it, but the folks are standing in line to get the vaccine. Is there any way that they could be set up in the Windsor Park and they'll, they'll be drive in um, for the COVID rather than standing in line? Because the first time will go in the cars and get the injections rather than standing in line where we have more risk for COVID. Well, I, I, I take your point. Um, all of the necessary um, health protocols are observed wherever we are, we are um, administering the vaccines. Um, you know, sometimes what, what can obtain in one country may not be able to be obtained in another country. Uh, I, I see this, this drive through as a, a regular in the United States and very prominent in the United States. Um, but in all circumstances, it may not necessarily be a practical um, solution to what you're proposing. But we take note of your, of your suggestion and observation. Um, and, and so we have procured vaccines. We are the first country in the developing world to have vaccines. Uh, to vaccinate every single adult person in our population. Uh, we have, we have um, provided antigen and, and antigen tests. One antigen test is 20 US dollars. And one PCR test that so we purchase is, a, I believe, 100 US dollars. And all of these things are being done free of charge. So it is a, it is a, it is a significant cost. Um, to, to, the, to the country. Um, uh, vouchers, I, I know we have been criticized for, for giving the frontline workers vouchers. We gave frontline workers between $300 and $1,000 worth of vouchers um, as a token of appreciation. Um, we know that while they are on the front line, they have the family home who need to purchase things and they may not be able to go themselves. Um, that's to say the frontline workers, and we, we try to help. I mean, if, if your salary is $3,000 and you were to be given uh, a food voucher of $1,000, I mean, who would not appreciate it? And the reality is, I can tell you, um, the people who are receiving it, who are beneficiaries, are appreciative of this gesture by the government. You know, so, uh, you know, we have to be, you know, criticism is fine, but we, our criticisms also must be, must be sensible. And it must be an effort to help improve and not to, not to denigrate or not to create confusion in the minds of the people. Uh, telephone call, please. Hello. Hello, PM. Hi. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Um, sir, 
I love the job you are doing. And uh, I just wanted to ask two questions. Sure. If there is a person who lives alone, and then for some reason they cannot get drunk, they want to get the vaccine, and they cannot get to the place, because there are nobody to transport them, mm -hmm. how would they get it? Yeah. Get that vaccination? Yeah. Well, we could, at, at the primary healthcare level, we could, in fact, come to the person's home and, and have the person vaccinated at home. Okay, so all you need to do is to inform the district nurse of this particular person, um, and, and, and I'm sure they would come across to the residents to have the person vaccinated. Okay, I, I, I know the person said he had two questions, but he may have gotten cut off, um, so we, we have, we're sorry for that. And then in, in relation to the vouchers, we have also provided all of the nurses and doctors and, and those who are in the COVID facilities in Portsmouth, some nurses and doctors are getting a special duty allowance. And, and on top of that, they're getting a risk allowance. So these doctors and nurses are getting two allowances in addition to their salaries. And then you have um, others getting the risk allowance. So all the orderlies, the ward aides, they're getting this risk allowance. Um, um, you know, while they are working on, on uh, to, to help us fight COVID-19. And um, so, so there are a number of, of, of things that, that, that we're doing to, to help improve the, the circumstance of these people who are fighting this virus for us. And what we have done also with some families that have been impacted by COVID, so you have a situation where a family is in Portsmouth, but they love their children home and their grandparents home. And so we've reached, we're reaching out to them as a government we, where we're buying um, agricultural produce from the farmers. So farmers are getting to sell their produce in this challenging period. We buy eggs from the farmers. We buy um, pork and chicken from the abattoir that farmers sell to the abattoir. So the government buys it from the evening. We buy vegetables and fruits um, from the farmers. And we redistribute among the population to help people in the circumstance. Um, the world over people have been doing this. We, we in Dominica, I believe we, we were the pioneers in doing this in the very early days of the, of the pandemic and several other countries in the Caribbean followed suit um, with this. And it's, it is a way of the government helping the local economy because government is the main consumer of goods and services. And there are many farmers who have been very um, welcoming and, and, and grateful uh, for, for the purchase of the agricultural produce, especially farmers who are elderly, um, and who could not, do not want to come to the markets for fear of the, of the COVID, that we go to their farms and we procure the agricultural produce and we package it nicely and send it out to the people. A telephone call, please. Good night. Good night, UPM. Hi, good evening to you. Good night to the listeners and viewers on the phone. Yeah. Yes, welcome, sir. PM, I want to personally thank you for what you have been doing in the country. I want to personally thank the Ministry of Health here in Dominica. Why some folks are taking this coronavirus for a problem, I would like to report tonight that coronavirus is not a joke. You know of my son who was in um, a PJ accident in Jamaica. He was in a, in a, um, in a coma for several weeks, and information has reached me that he had not died because he was in the coma. He died because he was not vaccinated on time. He contracted the coronavirus while being in a coma, and he mm. died. Mm. So people, I hope you all can understand what can happen if you do not take the virus. You do, not take, do not take the vaccine. You guys need to take the vaccine. In closing PM, I want to say this much. What you and this government have done in this country where housing is concerned, as a recipient of one of the houses in Dominica, people need to be honest with that. It is not the government rights to give you a house. The government don't have to do that. But because this government cares so much, this is the reason why some of us are on a roof that is safe, 
And we need to thank God that this government is a ring that we can continue to develop culture in the world. Ian, again, thank you. Thank and you. Thanks to the Minister and, for what you guys are doing in the country so far. And, and again, my, my sympathies to you um, on the passing of your son. Um, you know, may you still rest in peace and may the Lord give you the strength and the courage um, to deliver the loss. It was, it was never meant for us to bury our, our children. It was never meant for this. Uh, but that's the reality of, of, of the life we live on earth. Is there, there another call? Yes. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. My name is Esther. I am from Grand Julia Fortune. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I am not calling. But what I can um, ask, I understand you, so you kind of give everybody help or whatever. But what um, could you send out people to call the price for the sugar? Mm -hmm. Because because they say you raise the salary in September, they increase everything in the supermarket, and it is really hard for somebody like me that is a mother. I cannot afford to mm. keep my children. You know, I don't have to depend on you for money. I work in the morning, and if we go to the supermarket, they increase prices are well, $4, $5 on items. This is, this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, we, 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 have, um, we, have, we have gotten um, news of this, and um, certainly it's something that we'll investigate. You know, um, it, you know I, I don't want to make any prejudicial uh, comment about the private sector this time until I get the, the fuller picture of the situation, but certainly I will respond to you, um, to your query in, in, in due time. A caller, please. Hello, welcome. Hello. Hi, good evening. Good evening. W welcome. Um, I was asking a question, when are the children are getting the vaccine? Excuse me? When are the children are getting the vaccine? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that this week the Ministry of Health will um, provide the the scheduling of this, um, there'll be a whole process because your parents would have to sign a consent form um, and all of those information will be shared with the public hopefully um, tomorrow, Tuesday. Okay, so please listen up there. Thank you. Uh, phone, hello, caller, please. Hi. Hello? Okay, oh, I think um, I... I yeah, okay. Now, and, and even if it goes to the vouchers, all of the, all of the items are purchased from local supermarkets and minimarts across the country. Again, government putting money in the hands of the private sector in this difficult period. So, and we bought um, um, thousands of pounds of fish from, from fishermen. Um, fishermen are benefiting, people are benefiting, people can, 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 can get some monies and so forth. So there are a number of things that we're doing. Um, to this. And just to clarify, regards to businesses that can operate, the only, the only businesses that can operate in this period of time, one, are, are, um, are there's some blast places where they sell these this, this tickets there, the slot machines, um, discotheques, and um, bars. Every other business can open um, in Dominica. There's a caller. Please call her. Yes, good night. Hi, good evening to you. Welcome. Good evening, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I know people have a lot of attention has been placed on Portsmouth and the staff that are looking into the risk of awards and special busy awards for the doctors and nurses. I recently understood that there's a facility opening in town in the hospital with COVID positive patients. Yeah. There are staff working there, nursing, doctors, domestic workers, warding. What about the risk of one for these people? Yeah, um, I have, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, we are aware of this, and, and, and this is being addressed, yes. Um, you know, Businesses that can open now are discos, bars, and gyms. 
okay? And, 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 um, yeah, and they blast place and so on. And if you realize, we have been progressive for our decisions. So we went through curfew, um, but we never closed many businesses. Supermarkets were open. The, the farmer's markets were open. Farmers could sell their produce. Um, so the number of businesses, pharmacies were open. The number of businesses that were, that were open um, during the curfew period, during the still emergency period. And after the still emergency period came to an end on the 17th of, of August, oh, uh, every business was being open. So my friend Rhonda, Arana at Cainfield, who sells the barbecue and the, and the, um, and the pig tail, small, and barbecue pig tail and all these things, she can, she can in fact open. The only thing is that people can't congregate there or sit down to eat. They would come in, buy the chicken, and go home, or, or, and, and, and so forth. So she can, in fact, open. So people with barbecue, if you realize if I drive, I, drive, I drive to town, if folks are selling you juice along the side of the road, um, these people can open, but following the health protocols and all of the guidelines and the conditions um, precedent and set by the Ministry of Health. Yes, caller, please. Welcome. Good evening, PM. Hi, good evening. Welcome, please. And how are you? I'm um, pretty well, thank you. Okay. I am calling from Wallhouse. Wallhouse. Yeah. I was in New York recently, mm -hmm. and I can tell you, we are doing very fine here in Dominica, trust me. Because the kind of things I see up there, it's unbelievable. People are talking about things that are expensive here. I can tell you it's the worst up there because people are paying COVID price up there. <clears throat> and when it comes to the vaccination and wearing masks, very few people wear masks up there. And that COVID business is not going to go away no time soon unless we take the vaccine, unless we follow the protocol and do the right thing. If we don't do the right thing, we are going to have this virus all the time and for, and for a very long time. So it's, it's in our best interest to take that vaccine. Take that vaccine, wear our mask, and keep our distancing. Just do whatever, whatever the medical people tell us to do. We just have to do that. Period. Thank you, my dear. And nice to have you back, and nice to hear your voice. I hope to see you sometime soon. Uh, caller, please. Hello, welcome. Good evening. Good evening, PM. Hi, good evening to you. Good. I'm a mother who has taken a vaccine already. Mm -hmm. But there are young, some young people who want to take the vaccine, but they want to take the vaccine. <laughs> so, it would be wise to say when, when people are sick, when they can get vaccine. So, yeah, I know everybody's excited about the Pfizer and they say it's FDA approved and now I can take it, and, uh, which is good, you know, which is good, I'm happy. So let us, I said, the Ministry of Health will give the, the vaccine rollout. We are putting in place a, a national coordinating team and that team has been held, held, um, headed by Dr. Burnett, um, who has been a very conscientious and diligent young, young doctor, especially in the contact, in, in the testing um, there's have been contact tracing them taking place, and he'd been, uh, he will spearhead this operation of a number of, of, of nurses who will also be assisting with this national effort. My mandate to the Ministry of Health is that we need to get the vaccines in every health center in Dominica and, and go to the communities and, and go to the business places. Um, you know, wherever people are who want to take the vaccines, we're going to come to you and, and get you vaccinated. Uh, telephone call, please. Okay, you know, tell, telephone call. Hello, welcome. Hello? Yes, sir. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Pete. How are you? I'm pretty well, thank God. Alright, alright. Very good. Um, I don't know if you um, you've been a pretty good job. What are you doing in the country? Mm. Um, 
Yes, you got there one day. For the place you used to become in, right? That, um, would say that we would get vaccination at the end of all that we would do to the I know that you say that, um, you have no plan to make any vaccine for me, but mm -hmm. when certain places like that implement that we get vaccination starts to go to certain things for the young people. Is not the technically making the money better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, does it does we have to we have to decide what we want, you see? Um, we have to decide what we want. The the reality is there'll be businesses and individuals who will have their own protocols as to how they're gonna conduct the business. You see, at the end of the day, my brother, um, while well, the government is not interested and we're not gonna make vaccines mandatory for a number of reasons, um it does not, does not negate the view and the position that vaccines are important in the fight against COVID-19. But this is, a, this is a, to get vaccinated is going to be a personal choice. You know, what is, how are we going to help ourselves? How are we going to get ourselves out in this pandemic? We have to recognize that Dominica is not immune. This is a worldwide pandemic. Um, and to what extent are we going to take responsibility for getting Dominica out of the surge and, and so that economic activity can resume in earnest. Now, many of, of, of the people, or the same people who are most vocal about the government's um, response uh, to COVID-19 are also staunchly anti-vax people. Um, but, and, but the evidence shows uh, that one way out of this pandemic and one way of giving us a fair chance to fight this pandemic is vaccination. And I would also say to political leaders that you cannot, you, you, you cannot remain silent. It, it, any political leader anywhere in the world, Dominic included, who remains silent on this matter, hoping that there's, there's some political benefit to be had from, by not encouraging people to take the vaccine, when you yourself would have taken the vaccines. Why did you take the vaccine? And if something is good for you, it must be good for somebody, the, the people whom you're representing. I cannot come to the nation and, and tell the people to take the vaccines when I have not been vaccinated or if I'm not vaccinated. No. If, if we are serious about this thing, you know, political leaders who purposely sidestepped their responsibility to encourage their constituents who are supposed to get vaccinated must not be accepted. And we have, to, we have to call them out. Um, and, but the people see you, and the people he hear you or don't hear you. You know, and, but right now, I can tell you as a government, um, our main focus remains the well-being of our people, the health, social, and economic well-being. So we, we have to press on. So on, on, on this and, and get it going. And so coming back to the point of the businesses and so forth, and we've said to the nation, every seven days we review the situation. And if we have to shift gear, as we have done on a number of occasions, then we shift gear. Because this is a fluid situation. What 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 um what um demand what the demands of yesterday are not the demands of tomorrow. Or not the demands of today. So you, you and you can't you can't be stuck in the same gear. You have to keep moving because the situation is fluid. The situation is fluid. As a matter of fact, there was strong there was strong advice to me as Prime Minister in the cabinet to go into a complete 14-day lockdown. Complete 14-day lockdown. Now, for some, that would be great, and for others, that would not be great. So um, we have to recognize that this is a fluid situation, and as time goes by, we can, we can go. And when people, when people compare us with other countries and so on, and I don't, I'm not in the business of comparing Dominic with other countries, especially in this circumstance, but one cannot rule out the fact that this government and this country um, has, for the last um, year plus, been able to manage this COVID situation very well. 
and we have put all of the systems in place to ensure that we kept COVID-19 at bay. What is required and what's always been required is for us as citizens to, um, to be uh, vigilant and to play our part in there. I believe we have a call. Caller, please. In and, wave. And, I, and I think people have to start appreciating this. The, my position as a leader of the country, people have their own perspective, but I have the obligation to have the national perspective. So I'm not only preoccupied with government circumstance, I have to also be preoccupied with every individual circumstance and to ensure that we take decisions to facilitate as many people at any particular time. Um, you know, so we have to continue um, doing this. So we have to stop the fighting. We have to, um, we have to get um, the testing going on. And I want to really, the reality is, you know, truth be told, I, I am proud of Dominican Dominicans. The reality is the vast majority of, of Dominicans have been respecting the protocols and the guidelines. And, um, been working with the authorities to help, to help this. But we just have to be consistent with it. We have to be, um, we have to maintain a positive perspective and to be constructive in our criticisms of, of the situation. But we're gonna continue with our projects and programs. The International Airport, um, we have all of the lab equipment here. The lab has been completed. Um, we have started the clearing of the site. Um, so that we can create access to the site uh, to do the geotechnical studies that have to be done and the soil testing that has to be done. Um, local people have been, in, local equip equipment owners have been engaged. Um, so that's going on nicely. We have engaged and employed several people in, in the West constituency on the airport so far. And more, will be continue, more persons will continue to be employed as the days and weeks and months go by. The homes are on schedule for completion. The owners have, have selected the, the, the color for the homes. Um, you know, the, the several buildings have, have, the roofs have been covered. We're now moving to plastering. And we're seeking to push uh, to ensure that we can deliver the homes by the end of this year to the homeowners. So we, we, we're very grateful for this, all of this um, local people. Um, all materials procured locally from um, suppliers of, of blocks and cement and sand and aggregates and lumber and um, the um, galvanized the zinc, um, all of these things are, are procured locally, so one can appreciate the millions of dollars that are being um, put in people's pockets and circulating in the economy of Dominica by this project. And as time goes by, then more will happen. We are finali finalizing some of the more detailed drawings with regards to the Rosa Enhancement Project. As we told you, the, um, the Great Judge Street will be done, and also the Independence Street, one, once those two streets are done, then we'll move to King George V Street and then move to smaller smaller streets in the city of Rosa. So that is ongoing. Um, we'll be rolling out a major housing program again, initial um, program aspect again, with, um, con well, continuing right, right, rather. Um, my friends in Dubik who've been waiting for the reconstruction of the homes, I have given the go-ahead for this. 
Also, we'll be doing some additional 60 or 70 for the residents of Granby um, who, who, who so desperately need those homes. Um, Maho, Roseau Valley, Roseau South, Feebush, Catanago Territory is getting a, a serious uh, injection of new homes. Uh, 50 contracts for 50 homes have been signed with funds from the European Union. Um, um, the, the sites are cleared, lots are cleared. We will start in Sinecu and move through the Carnegie Territory. On the, the funds we contracted from the World Bank, some 40 million US dollars, um, we have been able to um, at least commence construction of homes, and, and, and some of those have been constructed in, in, in Marigot, in, um, in, in, in Cottage Constituency, in the Carnegie Territory as well, benefiting tremendously from those homes. And across Dominica, um, several people will benefit from these um, brand new homes with funds contracted by this government from the World Bank. Uh, health centers, we are finalizing the designs for the health centers in for Savon Pie, uh, St. Joseph, and Roseau. You know, I, I really would like to see us stopping to, from crossing this little ravine in St. Joseph and going to the health center that we have a modern health center to provide medical services uh, to the St. Joseph Health District and to the residents of St. Joseph. And I look forward to the commencement of this project. Likewise, in Savon Pie, you know, we have this health center in, um, in the community, um, in the community of um, Clifton. Um, it's small. It, is, it has made its, its, its part. We try to get a location in, in, in Capuchin, can't. In Clifton, we can't. In Cottage, we couldn't and we found a suitable location that the residents believe is suitable for the health center and the health officials have, have, have endorsed that and we're building this health center in Savon Pie. Um, clearly, we have been using the infant school in Rosa for many, many years. It, you know, it was never built for health center. It is, it is largely in, inconvenient. It, is a, it was an infant primary school. Um, so the new health center for the Rosa Health District will certainly be welcome news for the doctors. And I know um, Dr. John, the, um, the, the dentist, will be very happy um, that um, in, in time to come, very hopefully next year, she'll have a, a new facility um, to provide dental care to her patients in the public health system. Um, and of course, Newtown is here in completion. Collio basically completed. Um, Newtown, Collio, Sufre basically uh, completed and we'll be commissioning those soon. Penville is completed. We just have to move in the furniture and the medical equipment there and we will have the formal opening of the health center in Penville. And likewise for my friends and family in Ansdeme, Assault, or Benz, um, that will be the same situation for you. Um, we got so our students in Grambling and this issue that came up, we $2.9 million have been approved by myself as Minister of Finance. Um, based on a request from the Ministry of Education. Uh, that was done last week. They're making arrangements to have those monies transferred to the Grambling State. I know that there was a meeting between the government officials and the authorities at the Grambling State University, and there was some ar agreement arrived at, and um, that will be, go be going on. And we will continue to make payments to all the schools. Um, you know, but we have to appreciate too that the budget was passed in the third of, of August. Then we were faced with this pandemic, and of course, all our directions and efforts and energies were focused on bringing this pandemic, this um, surge, under control. The Dominica China Friendship Hospital is continuing, and I want to thank the Chinese government and the um, construction firm. They've been so diligent with the construction. Um, and as you know, the government of China is both building the, the, the structure, but they also outfitting the hospital, beds with medical equipment, uh, lab equipment, you know, theater equipment, um, uh, furniture, appliances. It is the full works that the Chinese government is providing to us. And part of that is, the, um, is an MRI, um, which was purchased from, in the United States from GE. The part of the procurement um, agreement was that GE was supposed to have sent some technicians to Dominica to set it up and to also train people in the use of the MRI. That was done. Um, we have on an island uh, um, two Cuban technicians who were specifically brought into Dominica to manage the MRI for us. Um, and we also get in local Dominicans trained in the, manage the management of the MRI. So 
I'm hoping that the, the hospital authorities can indicate to the public soonest uh, when we will have access to this MRI. And this would be a major um, step forward for us in America in the in our health services that we no longer have to go overseas to get MRI done. And we thank the Chinese government for this um, profusely. Um, the Marigold Hospital um, is, is completed. Um, we, we're now moving to have it um, furnished and put the equipment in. And very soon, we will, we will move to, towards um, purchasing, towards the formal opening, commissioning of that hospital. But it's, a, it's an edifice um, of magnificence. And I'm sure the folks in the Marigold Health District will be grateful um, for this. Um, grateful for this. Uh, the other issue there, with regards to farming, farmers, we continue to provide support. I want to thank um, Kevin Stevenson for his leadership on, on, on this project in particular. The farmers are receiving equipment, tools, planting materials, inputs, and farmers are making good use of it, and I'm hoping that they continue good use of it. The East Coast Road, the $127 million contract is ongoing, um, creating a lot of employment for many people. We will see as time goes by with the, con with the concrete works, more people will be engaged um, in masonry, and uh, etc. cetera. Um, the new bridges that will be constructed in, in Cassie Bruce and the Carnegie Territory. Um, so there'll be lots of opportunity um, for employment of local people for over, under this $127 million project. We are working on the um, details, we have to acquire additional lands for the administrative building in Portsmouth. It will be located on the public work site. I believe this is a, this is a much needed facility in Portsmouth, and the folks in Portsmouth deserve that building. It will be a multi-story building that will house all of government facilities. One floor will be um, for the use of the public of Portsmouth for, for conferences and, and public meetings. Um, and um, the Town Council will also have office space there, the post office, the sub-treasury, the Ministry of Education, all of the government entities will be in this building so that if you need government services, you go to this administrative building. Um, the Hillsborough to York Valley Bridge Road, the contract was signed, as you know, in July. Um, we, the contractor has mobilized, and we look forward to the completion of this very important section. Once this section is completed, we'll, take the, we'll do the, the second section from the York Valley Bridge onto um, this intersection in, in Sultan. Um, and then that will be the completion of this. And of course, we'll continue to improve the section from Sultan to Warner. Um, the Dominica Grammar School, as you know, I've given the green light to start and to hand over the site to the contractors. This will be a major, um, major development there. And, and, and for past students like myself, Current students and future students will be will, be, will all be very um, pleased with, with this facility. It will have its own um, um, courts, netball courts and basketball courts. It will have um, its, its auditorium, a massive auditorium, massive library. It will have its own, we'll also have our own playing field. Um, and so that we can ensure that sports, the, as grammar school was known for its prominence, um, can be maintained and returned um, to its glory days. The six China-funded hospital, I'm sorry, schools of Tetmon, Belvis, Chopin, Sineco, uh, Thibault, Calibishi, Goodwill, and Goodwill Secondary School. We're waiting now for the schedule from the Chinese side um, for the construction of these schools. Um, there are one or two challenges, I believe. One is in Sineco, where there's a, there's a decision to explore the possibility of building a completely new school and a completely new site. So I think there is an exploration taking place as to where in Sineco we could build this new school. Um, and then I believe um, in, in Belleville Chopin, there's a decision to, 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 to build a bigger structure and to demolish the existing one there as well. So there's some tidying up that has to be done in two sites, but the others are, are ready to go. Goodwill Secondary School is, is, is on site, Kalibishi, uh, Thibault, and my, 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 my folks in Thibault have been waiting for some time now. And I am happy that very soon we will honor that commitment and that promise to the wonderful people of the village of Tibo, my constituency and my people there. Maho Primary School is, is ongoing. Um, work is being done speedily and I have uh, full confidence that very early next year, the students will have access to, to the schools. The school's been funded by the Canadian government and thanks to them, Grand Bay Primary School, the Wills of Strathmore 
uh, Stevens Primary School in Marigot, the Daly's Primary School, and the Mont John Primary School. Work is, pro work is progressing satisfactorily on the, on the schools. Um, people are excited, the quality of the work, and um, certainly at the end of it, these schools will really be um, brand new schools. Um, interviews will be conducted or commenced very soon um, f to fill the many new positions of, uh, in the secondary schools. Uh, and I've seen various committees have been set up to interview deputy principals and um, principals, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I, I believe by now the interview should have started because the clearance was given uh, for that. And we're hoping that, um, uh, that, that this position be filled by the Public Service Commission in a timely fashion. So this is a, it's a huge day for education and for uh, our teachers um, in particular. Now, on the European of School, I know there are some people who um, had issue with, um, with some of the aspects of it. Now, clearly with the current surge of COVID-19, it will be impossible to have students go to school face to face. I mean, it, will be, it will be largely responsible to do so until we get the situation under control. And we felt that because the fifth formers, based on advice, because the fifth formers have, have all the books, um, et cetera, they could go ahead and commence um, classes. And of course, they're dealing with external exams. So they will start on, uh, on the 13th of September online, fully online. And then in the month of October, um, um, students, um, other classes, other forms will begin in 4th of October, I believe. And one of the reasons why we said 4th of October, clearly parents will have lost about two weeks or three weeks during the curfew because the bookstores were not allowed to open. And to avoid any rush unnecessarily and to have pandemonium in, in, in town with purchase of books, etc., we say, look, let us allow the schools, one, to put things in place to allow for um, online learning, get parents to organize themselves, Properly, so that we and we use the month to, of September to get things in, in, in order. And then there was the issue of getting the students to come to, to do the classes um, with the uniforms, and there was a, a reaction. Now, sometimes you know you don't know how to to please people because when we had online learning last year, the teachers complained that, of how the students were dressed. And to bring a sense of discipline and to bring a sense that I'm in, I'm in class. And I don't, really, um, I don't really expect students to have their full uniform and their shoes and their socks. I mean, all you have to do is a shirt. So you got, all, you, all, you, all, you, all you see is a shirt. Uh, um, you know, so you have a school shirt. And the reality is, let's, let's face it, we, we, we're talking here as family. Not, it's not every parent who has money to buy a different outfit for a child for every single day of the week, five days of the week. But when you have your uniform, you have two shirts. Nobody knows you have two shirts, you know. You use one for Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday you wash it and you use the other one Wednesday and Thursday. And the one that you wash on Tuesday, you use it for Friday. And if you have a white shirt, when you wash your white shirt, and do not put bleach in your white shirts when you're washing them. It turns them yellow or something. You know, you take a time and wash it and you use a little blue. I'm not sure you guys use blue. I, I, I still use blue. You don't look blue in this thing and it should look clean and, and crisp. And you take a time and you iron it, you know. Um, the iron should be too hot because if you iron it too hot, then it can leave a yellow mark on the shirt. Um, you see, I'm giving you guys a little lesson in ironing, you know. Um, um, you know, maybe next time I have an ironing session for, for you, not normally going in there. Um, so all those little things, you know, trying to get students to, to feel that they're in a classroom and not feel that they, they, they can play around and so forth. And then people complain about teachers being at home and the teacher's children are in the background and, you know, and so forth. And we say, look, let us get the teachers to come to the schools to run the online program from the schools because there's free internet to the to teachers. They have um, gadgets provided by the state so they don't have to use what the children have to use at home. So we're trying to see how we can work with different circumstances and what kind of combination we can have to, to ensure as far as pra practically possible people um, can people can can um, can can be fitted in and, and not feel left out. So you'll never be able to to address everybody's issue 
in the manner in which they would like you to, to, to do it, because you're not only dealing with one person, you're dealing with a whole nation. Um, so, <clears throat> my friends, I think we're coming to, I think I've, I'm out of time, but I wanted to say to you that um, I understand this situation is very stressful, um, very, very stressful for all of us, um, but the government is committed to managing and leading the country out of, out of this crisis. But it's going to need the people to play its, the part. You know, it's critical for the people to play part. Um, but I believe that there's promise on the other side of this. Um, there is an end to the pandemic that relies on every citizen following the necessary protocols to stem the spread of the virus. And very importantly, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. The promise lies in the many opportunities ready to take off in the economy, the major infrastructural projects, um, the job creation opportunities. You know, the Minister of the Digital Economy was reporting that of the successes of the um, opportunities of employment um, for the digital economy. And you're saying to me that, that there are some people who have been engaged by U.S. firms um, for online work um, programs who are making as much as 800 US dollars a week. You know, 800 US dollars a week. I was saying to him, you know, why didn't you tell me that so I could have applied? You know, um, you know, um, you know, you never know, you know, but the huge opportunities um, for, for us and, and it's matter for us to look at this thing positively. I know the, the anxiety can get the better of us in the circumstance, um, but we have to um, try to manage it and, and, and let us all work together to see ourselves through. Um, all of us must get ourselves out of this together. That's the only way we're going to succeed, together. And I, I, I want to say to us that I want to extend an invitation to key organizations. I, I listened to the Archbishop. Is the Archbishop? Um, today, you know, or the Catholic Church. Um, and I believe that that's one of the most potent um, sermons I've heard from a, from, a, from a religious leader on vaccination. And I urge all of you to listen to it. Um, it's a video. Um, you know, really, really well spoken on the issue of vaccination. And he indicating, look, he, 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 he educated himself, you know, on the, on the efficacy of the vaccines, the scientific aspect of the vaccines. And um, he, he really believes that this is the way to go to, to help fight this virus. And, and I think um, he, has done, he has done God's people well um, by, by, by speaking to them on this issue. And I believe that the good Lord will, will bless him. Um, for his leadership, because I find that there are too many leaders in our country who are silent on this issue. Who are silent on this issue. You know. And I can tell you, it, it, it aches me when, on, on, this, on this point, um, that we are in a battle, a war against uh, an invisible enemy that is coming to Steal, kill, steal, and to destroy God's people. And so many people are silent on this for one reason or the other, unknown to us reasons. We cannot be silent on this. We cannot be silent on this. And so I pray to God that he'll open the hearts of all leaders in this country that they too will play their part in the fight against COVID-19. This is not a time for platitudes. It's a time for decisive leadership and decisive involvement. This is not a time to seek to gain any political, um, hoping that, that we will descend in a state of disaster with COVID-19 and, 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 and then it will destroy the economy and, that, 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 and there'll be political opportunities for us. This is not what the Lord places on earth to do. We have to play our part in this. The government cannot do it alone. Yes, the government shall lead it, 
but the government can't do it alone. This requires all leaders to play their part. You know, civil society and, and, and the business community must also, must also show leadership. This is not a time for us to seek to uh, argue over choice of words or to seek to take out the white on the rise in our discussions. Our people are dying. Our people are suffering. Socially, economically. And this is not a time for us to argue on this and to have dissenting voice on this issue of us playing our part and providing leadership. You know, so I put it to us. Um, I thank God for um, friends of Dominica who were able to provide us with vaccines very early, um, very early, and we continue to have access to vaccines. <clears throat> From the time we start having vaccines, we've never not have access to vaccines, and we thank our partners for this. Um, and we need to, we need to develop, we need to develop <clears throat> a positive attitude in our society a constructive attitude in our society. And the attitude among us must be one to uplift. In a time of difficulty, in a time of anxiety, what we need to do is to give people hope. Not to create confusion in the minds of the people with misinformation. And I believe we have to engender in us an attitude of togetherness, an attitude of, of togetherness that rejects divisiveness. Because the reality is, any one of us can contract this virus, and any one of us can die from it. So we have to have this attitude and to inculcate in us and in each other an attitude of productivity, an attitude of innovation, and an attitude of entrepreneurship. And very importantly, very importantly, an attitude of prayer and reverence attitude of prayer and reference. We are a Christian nation. We believe that there's a supreme God. But we must not only say it or quote biblical scriptures, it must be practiced by all of us. And if we are faced with this challenge, it requires us to be our neighbor's keeper. It requires us to be not a, a, a people of, of, of rebellion, but to guide people. To guide people. To guide people and to provide the guidance to them and the education to them so that they can make wise choices. We've seen what this pandemic is doing around the world. And we know what it has done to us. And so let us play our part in this. We we'll all will not always agree with the decisions that are taken to help curb the spread of this virus. And we have a duty and obligation to make suggestions. But let us make those suggestions and those criticisms from a point of view of information. If we criticize, it must be, or if we ask a question, it must be to be informed. And if we're going to make a criticism um, emphatically, we must be able to substantiate the facts and the premise upon which we're making this emphatic criticism. So I am very open to suggestions and ideas as to how we believe we can 
increase of the vaccination rates in our country and how we can contain the spread of this virus. And yes, and how the government can um, increase revenue in this time when it has seen an increase in spending, especially in health. I wish you all the best. I wish our country the best. Let us work together. This is our Dominica. Let us work together to see ourselves through this period. And this period calls for togetherness. And all of us, every one of us, must reject divisiveness in our country. And we must inculcate in ourselves an attitude of prayer and reverence. And so if you remember anything I have said tonight, or if there's one thing I would like you to remember, all what I have said tonight, is that we need to inculcate in us an attitude of prayer and reverence. Because all things are possible to God. But we must not be foolish and not do what we are supposed to do and expect God to answer us. The God that we serve is a wise God. He's a sensible God. And we can't play games with him. And so I'm calling on leadership in this country, all leadership, church leaders, civic leaders, NGOs, business community, to let your voices be heard. Let your voices be heard and encouraging people to get vaccinated, encouraging people to follow the protocols. Silence, silence is not what is required now on this issue. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be back. God's willing, I'll be right back here on next Sunday. It's an opportunity to hear from you. Thank you to all the callers who call and the questions that were sent through Facebook. We do follow Facebook um, and the comments you make and the questions that you ask. And we appreciate this very much. Um, we do not have all of the answers, as I've always said in the, in the government. We rely on all of your comments and suggestions and ideas um, that you do it. But let's do it in a respectful manner. Let's do it from an informed manner, and let's do it in a manner that will improve our circumstance. God bless. Let's go forth and serve our Lord and country. This is our country to build, and we have a generation to mold. Thank you. Good night. I did not imagine that the prayers of my country would have been answered so swiftly. Protect your family, take the vaccine to save down the elderly, take the vaccine to bring back with festival, take the vaccine, 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 take the vaccine. This is a message from Tasha P and the Health Promotion Unit of the Ministry of Health, Dominica.